Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Extra History with part 5 of The Path to Pearl Harbor. So this one's called Climb Mount Nitaka. Nitaka? We'll go with Nitaka, okay? So, man, it's been a while, but again, a week, uh, Ben. So, right now, Japan's pretty much playing both sides from the USSR and USA. They're trying to get peace deals on both sides, and one wants war, the other wants peace. Well, we're about to see where things go from here. So be sure to like Scott for more. Let's check it out. Tokyo, November 5th, 1941, midnight. Ooh, Saburo Kurusu like... quietly sits on his bed. Despite his caution, his wife Alice, an American who Kurusu <laughs> met on assignment there, mm -hmm. wakes. I'm going to the United States, probably, Kurusu oh. says. When, replies Alice, Wait, when? morning. He explains that American Ambassador Gru has called in a favor to delay a Pan Am flight out of Hong oh. Kong so Kurusu could make it via naval plane. He mm. is to be a special envoy delivering oh. a peace proposal to Roosevelt. It's cold. Alice wraps a blanket around him. This mission will be a dangerous one. Militarists had plotted to assassinate Prime Minister Konoye due to his peace platform, and mm. one diplomat had already been murdered for getting too close to Gru. Oh, so they boy. decide their son, an army engineer, will oh, ride the train with him. That way, reporters would think that Kurusu was seeing him off on a deployment. And the next morning, the two head mm -hmm. out together, with Japan's last hope for peace sitting in Kurusu's briefcase. Oh, Kurusu. He's gonna need it. Here we go. Final chance. Thanks so much to GiveWell for not only helping everyone find highly effective charities, but also making sure that our donation dollars go further. Nice. The appointment of Hideki Tojo as Prime Minister seemed to put Japan on an inevitable path to war. But ironically, <gasps> behind the scenes, it was the peace faction that considered him the best candidate. After Ooh, all, talk. even if a diplomatic solution could be found, the new Prime Minister would need to be somebody with military pull. He would need to get the army on board with any agreement, and probably put down riots and attempted coups after the announcement of said agreement. And shockingly, it appeared they were right. Oh. Tojo himself was stunned by the appointment, and once in office, the enormity of Japan's predicament hit him. He now represented the whole country, and realized how dubious Oof. the Navy was about whether they could win a war with the U.S. So at a series of high-level mm -hmm. meetings in November, he reopened the question of a diplomatic solution. What could be done? Are we even sure we can win a war? What will be the consequences? He even proposed mm -hmm. revisiting the decision from the Imperial Conference of September 6th laying out that if diplomatic hmm. efforts failed, war would be declared on America, Britain, and the Netherlands. This was unbelievable. Re yeah, pretty much, if they don't figure out a solution, they're pretty much joining World War II. Like, I know they're pretty much all allied with the Germans, but again, not really much fighting going on. I mean, Japan's pretty far away from Europe, so they pretty much have nothing to do with, you know, What's Germany's doing there? So, I mean, honestly, if I was told you, I'd be like, look, I know I said we have to fight if diplomacy fails, but can we actually do it? I say no. We really got to make sure this works, which is actually kind of crazy. But you got to admit, with how we know about the Japanese, or at least their military, they do get a little rebel rally. You know what I mean, right? Anyway. Moving on. Reversing an imperial decision was unprecedented in Japanese history. Mm. These contentious oh, yeah, meetings the lasted for up to 14 hours at a time. Several <sighs> civilian leaders even <laughs> suggested a war would be so devastating, it would actually be preferable for Japan to accept a time of economic hardship and humiliation wow. rather than fight one. Though army leaders shot back quick, saying the country was already rationing and food prices spiking due to the American embargo. Better to declare war and have a small chance of victory than to accept the conditions of defeat without even fighting. But finally, Tojo mm -hmm. and his new foreign minister, Shigenori Togo, emerged with a last-ditch effort for peace. Okay. They would make two proposals to Roosevelt, Proposal A and Proposal B. In Proposal A, Japan would agree to negotiate an end to the Sino-Japanese War, make an initial troop drawdown, and withdraw all troops from China over a 25-year period. And in Proposal B, years? Japan would immediately reverse its troop movements to the southern portion of Indochina, freeze military deployments in Southeast Asia, and pledge to remove all troops from Indochina once the war in China was concluded. In return, America Hopefully would end it its aid to nationalist China, sell Japan oil, and broker trade agreements for rubber and other materials. 
Of course, they had greater hopes for Proposal B, since it was more concrete, immediate, and managed to avoid the thorny issue of China. The plan was to give Roosevelt Proposal A, then if it was declined, present Proposal B, and if both were turned down, it would be war. The military pressed for a new deadline, a date after which diplomacy was considered to have failed. Tojo managed to haggle almost a month out of them. So on November 5th, as Kurusu boarded his train, on, Tojo and his ministers sat down with Emperor Hirohito for a new imperial conference. They outlined the proposals, the dire costs of the American embargo, and the proposed attack on Pearl Harbor. The emperor gave his assent. Oh. If peace was not found by December 1st, the attack would go ahead. The next day, when oh, Nomura boy. presented Proposal A to Secretary of State Hull, he found him unenthusiastic. That was pretty much expected. What wasn't expected, however, was that Hull and Roosevelt would take until November 14th to Ooh. formally turn it down. So much Shut later than anticipated, back. Nomura and Kurusu tried Proposal B. What they didn't know at that juncture, however, mm -hmm. was that Hull already knew about this alternate proposal. Oh. Because over at the oh, Magic right. Program, its staff of military officers and code-breaking women, known as Code Girls, had already intercepted and deciphered the proposals when they were sent to Nomura via the Purple Code. So not only had Hull read both proposals, but he also read the government's instructions to Nomura about how to present them, which rubbed him the wrong way. Oh. See, while the magic program was good at cracking Japanese codes, they were bad at translation. Ooh. The program was underfunded, understaffed, and had no native Japanese speakers. And because Gosh. diplomatic communications were conducted in formal Japanese, the resulting translations, while substantively accurate, appeared harsher and more demanding than the originals. Uh -oh. Translators also inserted and removed words and phrases, making it appear like there was no room to maneuver. With basic errors, like substituting the phrase, final concessions, with the more provocative ultimatum. Seriously, Ooh. you put these things side by side, and it is pretty glaring. Huh. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm just checking this out, so I'm just going to make sure you guys can actually see it. Okay, cool. So here's the original. The present negotiates our final effort, and the security of the Empire depends on it. Okay, so that's the original, with, you know, proper translation. Here's the translation. The present negotiations are a final effort, same thing. In fact, we gamble the fate of our land on the throw of this die. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It does sound like they're pretty desperate with this final solution, or at least the final negotiations. Though, we'll hold, you think you would have, you know, put more effort into it, but then again, racism is still kind of deep-rooted in America at this time, because considering, like, what we would eventually do with the Japanese when the internment camps and all that. Not to mention the Jim Crow laws down south, so. Actually, where's all from? I kind of want to know. See, Carolina? Because, I don't know. Just sounded like something like that would happen. Anyway, back to it. Hull was also, <laughs> by this time, simply disinclined to believe anything Japan said. Its horrifying massacres in China and obvious preparations to invade Southeast Asia, confirmed again by the Purple Intercepts, meant that despite oh his friendship with Nomura, he considered the negotiations untrustworthy. Not to mention, Hull also disliked Kurusu, seeing him what? as a Nazi ally, since he'd signed the Tripartite Act on behalf of Japan. Oh so gosh. Hull and Roosevelt slow-walked their response to Proposition B, oh considering it carefully, as they oh also tracked Japanese forces moving into position outside of Hong Kong, in Indochina, and in ports across Japan. Purple intercepts and phone taps made it clear that Japan was talking peace, but preparing for war. To them, it appeared Japan was using diplomacy to stall their way to a better military position, and they were right. Secrecy around the Pearl Harbor attacks was oh incredibly oh. tight and the cabinet had specifically agreed to keep diplomats like Nomura and Kurusu out of the loop to make the bluff more convincing. Ensign Yoshikawa, the spy embedded in the Honolulu consulate from the episode earlier, didn't actually know either. He only really? knew he was supposed to pump drunk marines for information and to skin dive at night in the harbor channel looking for submarine nets. Increasingly, he was told to create a grid map of the harbor and cable what ships were berthed in which sections. It was clear to intelligence groups, both in the U.S. and Britain, that Japanese forces were preparing to hit something, but what? Singapore? The Philippines? The Dutch East Indies, maybe? Perhaps some combination. That last one seemed the most likely. 
Well, and for months, British and Dutch diplomats had begged Roosevelt for even a verbal agreement that the three powers would fight together should they be attacked. But still, Hull and Roosevelt remained evasive. Oh, An boy. agreement was premature. They were still negotiating with Japan. However, they did yeah. send out an alert to U.S. forces in the Philippines, Midway, mm -hmm. Wake, and Hawaii that a conflict might be coming. However, this Your warning mind. was so vague that individual commanders interpreted it in wildly different ways. Okay. In the Philippines, okay. it was seen as a caution that ships might strike Singapore, in which case America may need to provide air support. While at Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. it was seen as a warning of possible sabotage by the local Japanese-American population. An air commander responded by grouping planes close together on the runway where they were easier to guard and easier to bomb. But no one in the Roosevelt administration, apart from a few outliers, truly considered Pearl a target for a Japanese strike. To do it, the Imperial Japanese Navy would have to sail far north into freezing waters before turning down into the mid-Pacific tropics. They'd risk exposure if they were spotted by even a single merchant ship, aircraft, or PBY Catalina patrols out of Midway. And a surprise carrier-based air raid at such long range had never been done before. We assumed they had good sense, said one American commander after the war. Another admitted in racist terms that they simply didn't think the Japanese had the capability. Given the fleet Never movements, Roosevelt scrapped his more conciliatory counterproposal, and uh -oh. instead, he and Hull drew up a list of ten hardball points, known as ten. the Hull Note, including a full Japanese troop withdrawal from China and Indochina, abandonment of the Tripartite Pact, and to cease supporting puppet governments in China. Then, Japan could return to most favored nation status, and both countries would leave China. And they delivered that to Nomura, November 26th. On December 2nd, an undetected oh. fleet under Admiral Nagumo, already a third of its way to Hawaii, received a coded message mm. from Yamamoto. Incoming. Climb Mount Nidaka. The code that diplomacy had failed and that the attack Ooh. would begin. And while we wait... Yowch. Well, I guess that's what America gets, I guess. Oof. Really goes to show you really gotta be careful while you translate things, you know? I mean... Heck, seen that with Bismarck's plan to uh, put a German in the throne of Spain. A little translation error, and boom. Failed. Ouch. Yeah, you really gotta make sure of things. Otherwise, you're kind of running on faulty information. And that's worse than no information, you know? I mean, in a way, but still, think about it. Anywho, so that's gonna be it for extra seats for this week. So thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time, like, subscribe for more. I'll see you guys around. Night, everybody.